Scotland. Almost 80,000 square kilometers of enchanting land. With dramatic wilderness and an amazing array of spectacular wildlife. From the iconic and the extremely rare to the hunters and the hunted. Filmed over four dramatic seasons, creatures here will need strength and tenacity to survive a wild and unpredictable year. Winter in Scotland can be brutal. It can test the mettle of even the most tenacious animals. But so far, this winter is breaking all the rules. It's late January, and in the Western Highlands of Scotland, it's warm. Almost summer-like. The unseasonable warmth has brought red deer out of hiding. They'd normally be sheltering in the glens below. But with no snow or bitter winds to contend with, they're heading back to the hilltops. Where there's still plenty of heather to eat. Most hinds are already pregnant. There's no need for the stags to fight over them. But the unexpected winter sun has awoken their inner tough guy. And it's never too late in the year to remind each other who's boss. But sparring is dangerous. Winter could still hit them hard. And the stags have close to zero fat reserves to see them through the hard times. They must make the most of this heather fill their bellies while they still can. Just 30 kilometers south of the deer 
lies a wild and rugged peninsula known as Noi Dart. Centuries of overgrazing by deer and sheep have prevented trees from growing here. The land is unforgiving. Most farmers and crofters have long since deserted it. But a few stone dwellings remain. Some of these old buildings provide shelter. A place where animals can hide out of the wind and rain. One predator has found the warmest refuge of all. A female pine marten has dug a nest out for herself in an old bale of loft insulation. The cold wind outside rattles the rafters of the old barn. But it doesn't deaden the Pine Martin's killer instincts. She's not alone. A vole has been hiding out in an old cooking pot. This is far from the old growth forests the Pine Martins most at home hunting in. But on her desperate quest for winter shelter, she may have struck lucky and stumbled upon one of the few walk-in larders in the Scottish Highlands. Stalking her prey is easier under the cover of darkness. In daylight, the vole can give her the runaround. It eventually squeezes its way to safety. But the pine marten may get another opportunity. More voles are gathering outside. They're also looking for winter shelter. But they're wary of what lies inside. And keep scurrying back to the rocks. Finally, a vole ventures in, only to find a hungry pine marten waiting.
the pine marten has found herself the perfect winter refuge. No animal will be safe here while she's in residence. Bridging the gap between the highlands of the north and west and the lowlands farther south lies Stirlingshire farmland. Just over two weeks ago, it felt like winter had finally arrived. Farmers bought in extra feed to keep their livestock going. But the blizzards were short-lived. It's bad news for red kites. Despite a wingspan of almost two meters, they don't have the strength to kill large prey. They need winter to do it for them. And if they can't find any carrion, they could slowly starve. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Classed as vermin in Victorian times, kites were hunted to the brink of extinction. But 30 years ago, conservationists brought them back. They set up feeding stations to help them flourish. With the prospect of a free meal, excitement builds. Soon, kites are tumbling through the sky. Keen to grab some meat before it runs out. When the meat has almost gone, they fight over scraps. Unless winter starts supplying them with the dead animals they need, they'll have to rely on these free handouts just to stay alive. Sandwiched between Scotland and Norway and almost 650 kilometers south of the Arctic Circle are a group of 100 islands known as Shetland.
At night, when particles and Earth's magnetic field collide, the sky puts on a show. During the winter solstice, the northern lights shone for 18 hours. But as the season draws on, daylight drowns them out. One of Shetland's otter families are in a race against time. The female breeds every year, but she won't start a new family until her current cubs can fend for themselves. She encourages them to become self-sufficient by showing them tough love. On this morning's fishing trip, there's a new rule. Everyone must catch their own breakfast. Once they're all in the water, she gives her cubs the slip. And emerges further along the shore with a huge octopus. It's big enough to share, but she'll keep this meal for herself. well out of the cub's line of sight. Hunger makes the cubs more resourceful and their hunts more successful. But the male's first catch is small and bony. He'll need another meal soon. And it might come sooner than expected. His sister has caught a much bigger fish. Stealing from her should be easier than hunting. She's having none of it. A fat, lump sucker fish is caught in a tug of war between two hungry siblings. It's an otter delicacy which neither wants to relinquish. It's a battle of wills and stamina. which the female cub finally wins. While she enjoys the feast, her crestfallen brother calls for his mum. She doesn't rush to his aid. She's still got an octopus to get through. The male cub has had a taste of adult life. It'll only get harder when he's on his own. Over 400 kilometers south of Shetland, lie the Cairngorm Mountains.
February here is normally the snowiest month. But this year is different. There's still no sign of a big freeze coming. This warm spell is a catastrophe for mountain hares, whose only defense from golden eagles is to hide. Every winter, their fur turns from brown to white to blend in with the snow. But the snow just isn't settling. Now, they're an easy target for any hungry eagle passing overhead. This hare mustn't move a muscle. Even when the eagle is over one and a half kilometers away, she's still not safe. All she can do is fluff up her thick winter fur. And do her best to look like a snowball. The days feel long. And clouds never bring the snow that the hares so urgently need. Yawning helps the hares stay alert. And stretching warms their muscles. They must always be ready to make a quick getaway. Hares can still find food, even when they're glued to the spot. She eats her own droppings. Drawing further nutrients from them. Even though they've been digested once already. It'll be dark within the hour. This hare's survival skills have almost got her through another day. Two hundred and thirty kilometers due north of the hares are the islands of Orkney. Where a relative of the albatross has been waiting for the weather to change. Fulmers have been trapped on shore for over a week. Their feeding grounds are far out to sea. But they need strong winds to carry them there. Calm weather has robbed them of their freedom and their food.
but there's a change in the air. A stiff breeze ruffles their feathers. They shout their excitement to other birds along the cliff. Spreading their slender wings, they finally take to the air. Testing it for stability. When the wind speed reaches 40 kilometers an hour, flying becomes effortless. With their lives inextricably linked to the wind, the Fulmers head out to sea. This is the winter they've longed for. Ripples, whipped up by wind in the mid-Atlantic, gain energy as they travel east. Until they finally unleash their fury on Orkney's coast. Stormy seas churn up tiny organisms in the water. Creating a foam called spume. Which blows like salty snowflakes onto the land. helping to fertilize the soil. Winter tightens its grip. Three big storms hit the Western Highlands in February alone. These constant downpours are a red deer's worst enemy. They can shake off snow, but in these conditions, they never get dry. One young stag 
won't have to endure it anymore. Winter's finally taken its toll. But his death doesn't go unnoticed. This much meat could feed the buzzard all winter. But she must guzzle it as fast as she can. There are other hungry predators. on the hunt for a meal out here. Next to find the carcass is another buzzard. He's young and patiently waits for his turn to feed. But he may never get it. Eagles are watching them. There may be only 400 pairs of golden eagles in Scotland. But with a female weighing five kilos, the buzzards are easily outgunned. Just by one. The female eagle stands almost a meter tall. Her bill slices through meat easily. She can even break bones with her feet. Her mate watches on from a distance. He's smaller, older, and a little wary of her. It's best to let her get a bit of food in her belly before moving in. The death of a young deer stag has brought renewed hope to the two eagles. The deer's flesh will not only help them through winter, it may also help them prepare for the nesting season in spring. But for now, winter clings on, bringing leaden skies and even more rain instead of snow. It's the wettest winter the UK has seen in over a hundred years. After weeks of incessant downpour, Scotland's toughest survivors head to the shore.
They are the descendants of an ancient goat breed with historic lineage. Kept by Stone Age farmers over 4,000 years ago. Long abandoned, the breed has had to fend for itself in a land that quickly punishes the weak. Thick, shaggy coats protect them from the rain and cold. While seaweed, washed up by the latest storm, provides them with vital nutrition that's hard to find on the land in winter. It's especially important for a nursing mum. who's used all her energy in providing milk for her kid. For her youngster, this food is strange and new. But he can't afford to be picky. like the billy goats further up the shore, who are stripping a fallen tree of its bark. You'll have to learn quickly. There's no room for fussy eaters when it comes to surviving a Scottish winter. Back on Shetland, it's the sea that shapes the seasons. It's late winter, and most fish are in deep water far from the shore, making life extremely tough for a young dog otter who's looking for a hunting ground to call his own. Last year, he was protected by his mother. But now he's on his own. And his face bears the scars of a serious beating. By coming here, he risks another. There's a bigger, more dominant male nearby. Who'd readily sink his teeth into the young male. If he spots him. Otters have a powerful sense of smell. But by staying downwind, the young male reduces his chances of being detected by the dominant male. Hungry, he heads out fishing. Sticking to the shallows, where he can hide in the seaweed. This time, fortune plays in his favor. The dominant dog otter has been distracted by a sheep.
It buys the injured male extra fishing time. He emerges with his catch. It's not much reward for all his effort. Crabs have very little calorific value. And they're a nightmare to eat. He has no choice. He'll have to risk everything again. And go hunting one more time. When the ice sheets retreated 11,000 years ago, pine forests slowly took hold in the Cairngorm Mountains. Growing in close-knit stands, Pines are a stable and protective refuge from winter. Many birds depend on the pines, but none more so than the crossbill. A member of the finch family, there's one species living in Scotland that's found nowhere else on Earth. They have unique bills, which overlap, to help them pry seeds out of pine cones. Access to food, even in the grip of winter, gives crossbills an edge over other songbirds. They're already pairing up for an early breeding season. One male finds somewhere prominent to flaunt his plumage. But he's got stiff competition. A rival male gives himself a makeover and quickly draws some attention from a female. The lone male can only watch on as his rival gains a new admirer. The Cairngorms hold the record for the lowest temperatures and the highest amount of snowfall in the UK. Although this year's been mild, temperatures are dropping fast. And more of the pine forest's rare residents are bracing themselves. Red squirrels have been wiped out in most of the UK. 
this Caledonian forest is one of their last remaining strongholds. The squirrels don't hibernate in winter. Instead, they depend on the food that they hid in the autumn. But this doesn't last forever. Their secret stashes can be pilfered by other squirrels. The longer the winter drags on, the more likely they are to run out. Every time the temperature drops, by even just a degree, the squirrels have to find even more food just to keep them warm. Bushy tails act like umbrellas when the sleet starts. But this is turning into something more. Just when animals in Scotland are starting to look forward to spring, winter makes a late appearance. And if this weather's locked in, it could have dire consequences. From the craggy isles of the far north, to the icy forests of the south. Wild inhabitants are pushed to the limits of their endurance. But eons of adaptation have taught them to fight, to not just survive, but to thrive in Scotland's last great wild fortresses. <laughs> 